What's going on guys and welcome to another Kraken Pack episode. Today we are opening up a pack of Battle for Zendikar. I do want to go ahead and apologize for this episode being a little bit late. Uh, if you are on our Instagram, you saw that I was actually out of town for a conference. I was in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, never been there before, had a lot of fun, uh, but I am back now, so I'm recording the day of release. I do apologize. Uh, of course, we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one uh, draft, so we're going to do the best we can to figure out what our first round pick would be. We do start off with Alter's Reap, so it's an instant for one and a black. As an, as an additional cost to cast it, you do have to sacrifice a creature, uh, but it does allow you to draw two cards. So there are some instances where something like this is not as big of a downside as it may seem uh, a lot of uh creatures in this set if they die or something like that or if they uh are sent to the graveyard uh you can actually get little like eldrazi spawn tokens things like that so there are instances where this is actually just a perfectly fine draw spell i don't like taking draw spells early i think they're fine but they're not amazing and so uh for me this is definitely not a first pick uh, Plummet is an instant for one and a green. Destroy target creature with flying. This is a really classic card. We see this in a lot of sets, uh, and it's actually really good. So normally, normally you're going to find a creature with flying in somebody's deck. Uh, so you can probably main deck maybe one of these. Uh, I would never go over that uh, just because a lot, of a lot of decks don't run that many creatures with flying. Some strategies, it's going to be really, really good to have multiples of these, like blue-white flyers, kind of a classic archetype. You want to have this, as many copies of this as you possibly can, because it is a super, super efficient way to destroy any creature with flying. Instant speed, two mana, that's great, especially in green where they don't get that much removal anyway. Uh, really, really like that card. But it is a little bit narrow, and so for that reason, I like taking this later when I've already established I'm going to be green. Uh, it's much better in that scenario. Uh, Nettle Drone is a 3-1 for 2 and a red. It does have Devoid, so it does not have a color that was a mechanic specific to this set. Uh, you can tap it and it deals 1 damage to each opponent, and then whenever you cast a colorless spell, you may untap it. Uh, so this is a really interesting card. There was actually a, a combo, I believe, with this, uh, like uh, an infinite combo in Constructed, not obviously in uh, Draft. I think it's a little bit too difficult there, but uh, this was a really interesting card. Being able to ping your opponent is great. The only downside to this is it doesn't ping creatures. I feel like that would be a much more useful mechanic, but still dealing damage to an opponent, perfectly fine. Uh, and then being able to untap it obviously is uh, really powerful as well because Devoid is such a prominent mechanic in this set. You're gonna be able to untap it probably a, sol a solid number of times. So uh, this is a really great way to deal damage but not have to attack. And so far, this is definitely the front runner of the pack. Obviously we're only at the common level, but uh, still a pretty good card. Uh, Cliffside Lookout is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white. You can pay for in a white and creatures you control get plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. This is a really interesting card. So it's a 1-1 one, one for 1, already perfectly fine. Uh, and then it does have that mana sink late game that actually can help you win the game. So as I mentioned already, we do have a lot of like spawn, Eldrazi spawn creature tokens or Scion. I don't remember which it is. I think it's Scion in this set. Uh, but what you can do is just have tons and tons of those and then pump them up with the card just like this. So gives you a little bit more late game presence for a card that you can play early on. Obviously, a lot of times a card like this is probably going to die pretty quickly because it is just a 1-1, one, one, but uh, if you can manage to keep it around or if you can play it late game, it is actually a really powerful mechanic. I do want to also note uh, you don't need to uh, wait a turn to use this mechanic because there is no tap in this activated ability. You can go ahead and actually play this the turn it comes into play, so if you have 6 mana on hand, uh, this is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one that also pumps all of your creatures that same turn for plus 1 plus 1, which can be a really big game changer. So I do like a card like this. I don't think it's better than the Nettle Drone. I like the extra damage that you get kind of right away with that Nettle Drone. Uh, but this is definitely a pretty good 1-1 uh, one, one just early game creature. Uh, Skyline Cascade is a land. It does enter the battlefield tapped. Uh, it also taps for blue, but when it enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls does not untap during its uh, controller's next untap step. Very classic tempo effect that we see in a lot of different cases. We've seen it on a lot of different kinds of cards. Uh, on a land, it's a little more like not that great, I would say. Uh, it's still useful, but being able or or coming into play tapped is actually pretty big, uh, especially for a land like this where 
if you're in just a blue deck, you're kind of you're any deck really. You're gonna want to uh, stay on curve as much as possible. And a land that doesn't give you any extra fixing or anything like that is a little bit lower on the priority list than something that enters the battlefield tapped, but maybe produces two different colors or something like that. I do like this effect, so I'd be willing to give it a shot, but when I was drafting with this set at least, I tended to shy away from these lands just because I didn't really feel like it was as worth it. Uh, but in some cases, I do think it is a strict upgrade to an island. Obviously not a card that you're going to pick first off though, just because you don't know what color you're going to be in. Uh, but they're little buffs if you get them later in the pack. There is also uh, a full cycle of these, so obviously whatever color you're in, you can get a little bit of a bonus. Uh, Eyeless Watcher is a 1-1 one, one for 3 and a green. It does have Devoid as well. When it enters the battlefield, you put two 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature tokens onto the battlefield. They have sacrificed this creature at one of any color, to, or excuse me, one generic to your mana pool. Uh, this is a classic 3-for-1 creature which is great. Uh, yes, it only represents three power, but it also represents two mana, which is pretty solid. Uh, I really, really like that. I think this definitely beats out the Nettle Drone, to be honest. Uh, this just helps ramp you, and that's fantastic. Obviously, spreading out the power is generally a good idea when you're in uh, a limited format because there's a little bit more targeted removal, not necessarily as many sweepers and things like that. So being able to spread out your board a little bit is super, super useful. Uh, and doing it like this where you can also get a little bit of ramp with these Scion creatures is fantastic. So I really like this card. Definitely so far the pick. Uh, Rush of Ice is a sorcery for one blue tap target creature. Again, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, but it also has Awaken 3, another set specific mechanic. So for four and a blue, if you cast this spell for the Awaken cost, you can put three 1-1 one, one counters on target land you control and it becomes a 0-0 zero, zero elemental creature with haste. It is obviously still a land. Uh, so this was a really powerful mechanic, one that really gave you a lot of late game presence for cards like this, which can be kind of really good in the early game. It's a perfectly fine tempo play for one blue mana. Uh, it's really, really good, but being able to then awaken it for a little bit of extra mana gives you not only the first ability, but a little bit of a bonus with that extra creature. So awaken a really, really strong mechanic. I think the Watcher is just in general a more powerful card, just being able to spread out that board presence. Uh, but this is definitely, definitely a really good card. I love stuff like this. If I'm in a blue deck, this is exactly what I want. Uh, it gives me a little more late game presence, but still keeps that tempo game alive. So really, really like it. Uh, Silent Skimmer is a 0-4 for three and a black. It's also devoid. It does have flying and when it attacks, the defending player loses two life. So this is a really interesting card because obviously generally you don't want to attack with a 0-4. Uh, it's not going to do any damage, but uh, every time it attacks immediately, the, the defending player is going to lose two life, which is fantastic. It is also a flyer, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to block. I love that. Uh, but you do lose a pretty good blocker in the way of a 0-4, so it obviously isn't going to be destroying anything, which is kind of a downside, but uh, having 4 power means it's probably going to be able to block a decent number of creatures. So you're losing that blocker, but you're dealing 2 life just immediately without even having to do combat damage. Uh, obviously though, if it is blocked, uh, it's pretty bad because it doesn't have any power. Uh, so it's very easy for the opponent to block a creature like this, which I don't like. Uh, and so for that reason, I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, Mortuary Mire is the black cycle in the, this land, this uh, single color land cycle. So it enters the battlefield tapped, does tap for black. When it enters the battlefield, you may put target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Uh, this is perfectly fine recursion. Obviously, you know what your next draw is going to be with a card like this, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, if they've used a removal spell, uh, you're able to bring that creature back and hopefully get dual, uh, dual use out of it, which is fantastic, uh, especially if it's a really, really powerful card. So this tends, to, in my mind, to be a card that you would play a little more late game, <coughs> excuse me, uh, if you can. Uh, because you don't really want to just get back any creature. You don't want to just get back like a two drop or something like that. Like you want to get back something good. Uh, and so later in the game, this is a perfect card to be able to bring that back. So I do like this one. Again, I like to be established in that color a little more before I pick these. They're not super high priority picks for me. Uh, Natural Connection is an instant for two and a green. Search your library for a basic land card. Uh, put it onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. 
This is a really classic just ramp effect. Uh, I don't like it as much as the eyeless watcher because I really like having that board presence. Uh, but it is instant speed and does cost uh, one mana less, which is good. You're also not having to sacrifice creatures for that ramp, which is fine. Uh, but much rather have the eyeless watcher. I think that's just a hands down better pick. Uh, Zulaport Cutthroat is a 1-1 for 1 and a black. Uh, when it or another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Again, we're seeing with that first card uh, that alters Reap, I believe, uh, you can see a little bit of interaction with a card like this where if you can sacrifice some creatures and have this card out, uh, you can actually deal a little bit of damage to the opponent. So there are some bonuses to doing sack outlets. Not only that, but with all these Eldrazi Scion creature tokens that do sack themselves for mana, uh, you can really, really get some awesome uh, combos going with this where you can just really, really burn out the opponent, or I should say, I guess, drain out the opponent uh, since you are gaining that life as well. So I actually really like this card. I don't know uh, how great it is in draft, but I think I would definitely try it over anything else that we have seen. Uh, it's just a really powerful card. Uh, Unified Front is a sorcery for three and a white. It does have Converge, so uh, you put a 1-1 one, one white core ally creature token onto the battlefield for each color of mana that was spent to cast United Front. Uh, so there is a core kind of ally deck in this uh, this draft environment, and that is kind of a multicolor deck. You're going to be in a lot of colors with something like that because you're spreading all these abilities across all of these different colors. Uh, something like this with Converge means that you have a little bit of a payoff card where you can hopefully put up to four different colors into a card like this and get four one white creature, one one white uh, core ally creatures, which is really really powerful, especially if they all have uh, if your other core allies have abilities that really trigger off of these. So. It is powerful. I don't think I'd pick this uh, up front. I think I'd rather have a couple of the more payoff uh, core ally, just straight up creature cards first. Uh, but this is definitely a powerful card. Uh, Ulamog's Nullifier is a 2-3 two, for two, a blue and a black. It does have Devoid. It also has no color. Uh, so it does have Flash and Flying as well. So you can play it at instant speed. Uh, when it does enter the battlefield, you may put two cards uh, of your opponent's own from exile into their owner's graveyards uh, if you do counter target spells. So this is a really interesting counter spell on a stick kind of mechanic. You do also have to be dependent on the opponent's uh, exile zone in particular. There are a lot of cards that do exile with this uh, in this set, I should say, but I don't like relying on that. It's also two color. Uh, and generally speaking in a set like this uh, where multicolor is not necessarily the, the best way to go Though you'll probably end up there most likely uh, I I don't like picking this early. It just kind of pigeonholes you a little bit I feel like this is a very very specifically good card uh, But nine times out of ten you may not find the best place for it. So for me not the best pick uh, well Green Warden of Marasa is our uh, mythic rare actually so it's a 5-4 four for four and two green uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. That can be any card. Uh, when it dies, you may exile it. And when you do, uh, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So you can also do that again if it dies, if you choose to exile it. Uh, so this is just great. This is a bomb. It's recursion. It's everything that you could possibly want. Uh, this is absolutely the pick in my mind. I don't believe we got anything foil or anything. So... Pretty clear Green Warden for me. Uh, feel free, of course, to disagree in the comment section below if you so choose. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I will see you in the next Crackback episode.